You're all very welcome to Chagas Kildalton College for the AgriAware Farm Walk and Talk. We've taken a series of short videos from around the campus here in Kildalton, which we hope you'll find beneficial in your studies. These will be available at chagas.ie. Best of luck in your studies and your future careers. Welcome to AgriAware's annual Farm Walk and Talk event. We have teamed up with Chagas in Kildalton to bring to life some of the key practices and concepts of Irish agriculture. Through these videos, we hope that you will gain some insights into how a real farm works. We'd like to thank Chagask and all of our key sponsors for help in putting together these videos. Hello, my name is Erlina and I am a dairy lecturer here in Cadalton College. And in this talk, I'm going to go, go through uh, the antimicrobial resistance. So, First of all, what are antimicrobials? Antimicrobials are medicines that we use to target nasty pathogens like bacteria, fungi that cause disease in animals and cause disease in humans. So those antimicrobials are used to kill or to stop the growth or the spread of any kind of pathogen. So what's antimicrobial resistance or AMR as we classically know it? Well, for humans and for animals, we can develop resistance. So the pathogens like bacteria and fungi in our bodies can develop a resistance over time. And that's due to antimicrobials being used in an ineffective manner. So being overused, underused, or just being misused in general. And that potentially may cause a future risk to our current everyday medical procedures that we have. Um, so it's a big risk to human and to animal health that we start developing this resistance to antimicrobials or these medicines. So how do we prevent antimicrobial resistance? Well, it's important on farms to record all the antimicrobials that we use. So any antimicrobials that are given to animals, the animal that it's given to, and when we give it to the animal as well, it's really important. It's also very important that we only use antimicrobials for treatment of active infections not for the prevention of infections. Also, we must ensure that we use it as prescribed. So whatever antimicrobial medicine we use, we must use it as it's prescribed. So the correct dosage and the correct length of time that we use that antimicrobial for as well. So how does that relate to dairy farming? Well, in a dairy setting, we milk cows for the majority of the year. So those cows are milked. They're milked into a communal area called a bulk tank. That bulk tank is held on the farm here. A milk lorry will come along every couple of days, collect that milk, and that milk will be brought to a local creamery where it's processed. That milk will then be processed and will eventually come out onto supermarket shelves as your milk that you find in a carton, and we consume that as a consumer. So the problem lies, I suppose, with antimicrobial resistance, where we get infections in cows during the year. So as we milk our cows during the year, there may be occasions where we get a cow that suffers from an other infection. So in the case where a cow might get an infection in her udder, so that can occur during the milking year, where we get one cow that has an infection in her udder, we must treat that cow. So we must find out where the infection is, okay, located in the udder, and we must find out what pathogen is infecting that cow. So I'll take a milk sample from my cow, I'll use an empty bottle, okay, and I'll take a milk sample from that cow, from her teats, and I'll fill it up and send it off to the lab to find out what pathogen, bacteria, fungi, is actually infecting that cow. So take for example this cow is infected with a bacterial infection. So I come back um, from my labs and I find out that there's bacteria in that udder that's causing the infection in the cow. So I need to treat that cow for that bacterial infection. So I use the type of antimicrobial that's going to treat a bacterial infection, which is an antibiotic. So in this case, this antibiotic is in a tube form. And I will release that tube and I will insert that up into the cow's teeth. Okay, and that will get up into the udder and it will treat the bacterial infection in the cow. So if this label here, and it's very important that we read the labels on these um, dry cow tubes as well as these tubes in general, to make sure that we apply the correct amount of antibiotic for the cow and that we apply it for the correct length of time for the cow as well. So say for example, I treat this cow and it tells me I must treat her for four days. I might treat that cow every day for three days I see that she's getting better and I decide I'm not going to treat her on the last and final day, the fourth day, for that infection. And in that case, is that very harmful for the cow? And yes, it is. So what would happen if I only gave that antibiotic for that cow for three days instead of the four days that's stated on this? 
what would happen is in the first day when I treat that cow for that infection with this antibiotic, you can see the bacteria in here and you can see this antibiotic represented as a red and blue tablet. So it will target the infection for the first three days. But if I don't give her the recommended amount for the full four days, what will happen is after three days, the majority of bacteria is killed, but we have a, a residing small amount of bacteria still left there. And if I don't use the antibiotic for the full four days, that bacteria will stay there, probably the most resistant bacteria, and that bacteria will eventually, although it's small in numbers now, will multiply, will reproduce, and in a matter of time, that cow will get sick with another infection of this resistant bacteria this time. And when I go to use the same antibiotic for that cow again, this time the antibiotic is not going to work for the cow. And that's how we get this antibiotic or antimicrobial resistance in animals, which can be passed on to humans because we consume uh, produce from those animals. So the stark reality is that scientists believe that by 2050, we could have more deaths globally from antimicrobial resistance than we do from cancer. So that's something to remember as well. And it's also very important to remember that when we're treating the cow as well for her other infection, that we don't let that milk during the time of her being treated, we don't allow that milk into the bulk tank to be collected by the creamery and to be processed. Because if that were to get into our carton of milk on our supermarket shelves, that is filled with antibiotics. If we were as healthy people to drink that, we can build up resistance to those antibiotics. So if we look at these two samples here, this sample here has no antibiotics in it, and this sample of milk does have antibiotics in it. But we can't see that to the naked eye, so it's invisible to us. So it's very important on farms that we make sure that there aren't any antibiotic residues that will eventually end up in a supermarket in a carton like this that we potentially can drink because we wouldn't know that there is antibiotics in it. So very simple on-farm tests, such as this test here, only takes three minutes to be able to tell you whether there are still antibiotics residing in the milk. So it's basically you just take a milk sample from your cow, you apply some of that sample to the top of this system here, leave it for three minutes, and it will tell you after three minutes whether there are still antibiotics in that milk, which is very important for us going forward to prevent antimicrobial resistance in humans and animals. Okay, thank you. So that's the segment on antimicrobial resistance.